What's going on, everyone? So there's a lot of excitement on skinny Zion, right? Zion Williamson is even thinner than he was with Duke. Uh, supposedly still wants to lose, you know, around 7 to 10 more pounds, really kind of shape out in that regard. Now, with that comes, you know, a couple points, right? One is the concern, like, will he be as dominant as he was? Because he was just like this physical specimen, right? He's just like 300 pounds, just hyper athlete that can just power and bully his way to the basket and no one can really stop him because he's just so physically uh strong and physically imposing where you know if he loses a lot of the weight behind him yes it's great for his body it's great for his knees it's great for his ankles it's great for everything um but does he lose an element or two uh where i actually think that this is, it may be a little curve. There may be a little bit of an adjustment, but it's not like he's dropped to like 215 or something. Like he's still, if he's walking around at like 275, still a big boy, right? It's still a guy that's going to be able to power his way through things, but it just will help his body. And he may be able to be a little more crafty than he was, right? Definitely he's going to need to work on certain things if he is to get to that point, but it may do wonders for his game. Obviously the longevity of his game kind of help with the just injury history that he has because look, the Pelicans, you know, they're a team that on paper should be in conversations for like true contenders, one of the better teams, but they're not. I mean, they're still looked at as most likely a play-in team by most, by many. Maybe they squeeze into one of the playoff spots. And again, they just landed DeJounte Murray, which is kind of the piece that they needed desperately, that real playmaker to kind of put everything together so the offense isn't so clunky at times, especially in the half court, right? Also, a guy that can push the pace and help you get out in transition with a Zion, with a B.I., right? You have Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, and we have seen over the years Pelicans looking like one of, if not the best team in the league for stretches. We've seen them just be smothering defensively. We've seen them just be the one seed in the Western Conference for a stretch or be, you know, in, in that top range in the Western Conference for stretches. And yet, time and time again, the same thing ends up happening. You know, Zion or B.I. end up getting hurt or in some cases, both of them end up getting hurt. The Pelicans end up falling apart and... They're, they come back, but by that point, it's too late, and they're a play-in team, and then they, you know, are not in full stride, so they end up losing, and then it's just the same story, same script every year, it feels like, right? There's all this promise, there's all this talk, but obviously, there's the concerns of Brandon Ingram, not even the health-wise, obviously, that's an issue, but he wants out, the Pelicans want to unload him, problem is, they can't, like, even Brandon Ingram's team has been trying to find a, a trade for him. I mean, Pelicans are basically like, hey, man, we just, anything, right? Get us anything for him. And they're unable to do it because, again, he wants you know, a max contract. He only plays, you know, half the season. And so it's like, what team wants to do that? Also, Brandon Ingram is a great player, but is he your first or second or third option, right? He's not your first, right? That's apparent, right? Is he your second? Maybe, right? Depending on who your first is. If Zion can, I mean, because what we saw, particularly in that Laker game before Zion got hurt, we saw everything we wanted and were hoping that Zion would be. That dominant presence that's just give me the basketball and get out of my way. I'm going to go win us this game. And he might have very well done that. Right? They were having their struggles stopping the Lakers, and the Lakers were ahead, but Lakers had zero answers for Zion. Zero. Zion was getting everything he wanted in that fourth quarter. So, you know, Lakers end up missing a couple key shots, and they can't continue, and they can't figure out how to stop Zion. Zion might have single-handedly won that game for them. Right? So maybe if Zion can be that force, maybe with a Brandon Ingram fully locked in and bought in, and you add in DeJounte and stuff, right? you look at, like, like Giannis with the Bucks, or, you know, Jokic with Denver. Like, they were able to win a championship because their main star was so good and so dominant that you didn't necessarily need that, like, bona fide number two, right? You look at, like, Giannis was dropping 50 in the finals and stuff. But Chris Middleton, who's probably best as a three, Drew Holiday, who's probably best as a three, the two of them collectively, plus the rest of the talent, you know, Brooke Lopez and Bob Portis and all these guys, you you add in all those little factors, now they're good enough collectively with that one star that's just, you know, uh, top, top tier, 
then they're able they were able to pull it out. Same thing with Jokic, right? Jamal Murray has been great. Uh, actually, last last playoff run he wasn't, but you know he's had his moments, he's had his careers. Never been an All Star, but and he's again probably best as your third guy. But with him and Aaron Gordon and KCP and uh, you know uh, Michael Porter Jr. and then Bruce Brown off the bench, right? Like collectively they were good enough to win a championship. Well, the Pelicans, you look at the same way, right? You look at, you got DeJounte Murray, right? You got Brandon Ingram. You got um, CJ McCollum. All three guys, again, are probably best as a third option, but now you have all three on the same team. And if Zion's presence can reach those heights of like he's a top 10 player in that area, and then you also add in that they have Herb Jones, who makes a real genuine argument for best on-ball defender, or one of the best on-ball defenders in the entire league. You know, you got uh, Troy Murphy who's stepping up and doing his thing, right? You start Jose Alvarado, you start going down the depth chart of the Pelicans. It's like, collectively, if Zion can kind of go head and shoulders and show he is that player that we saw towards the end of last season for the Pelicans, then yes, I think the Pelicans can truly be a contender. Right? And there is this kind of question of like, how is the lineup going to be? Like ESPN has CJ McCollum potentially winning six man of the year. He's like in the top 10. And, you know, a lot of people are like, man, why would they have CJ McCollum come off the bench? He's not going to come off the bench. He's going to start. I don't know. Right. If they're not able to trade Brandon Ingram, do you go with like BI at the two next to DeJounte and put in a, a Troy Murphy or a Herb Jones? Right, and then have CJ kind of be your sixth man, your your scorer off the bench. I don't hate that idea if I'm the Pelicans. That might even be the best idea. With all that size, all that length, all that versatility. Also, who is the Pelican center? Right? Like they don't really have a center. So they have Zion most of the time start at center. So if that happens, okay, so then you might be playing Herb Jones and uh Troy Murphy, which you may need to because you won't have a center. Right, so you might need the size and the length out on the perimeter, right? You might need to change up your offense schemes. You might need to push the pace more. You might need to to have that shooting spread out and just let Dejounte create, right? And then have, like I said, CJ come off the bench, right? There's still a lot of questions and concerns with the Pelicans, but there's a lot of optimism and hope. Again, at the end of the day, it comes down to the two stars. It comes down to Brandon Ingram and, and uh, Zion Williamson. Also, does Brandon Ingram buy in? Right? Does Brandon Ingram really commit to the Pelicans, or is he kind of just like there, but not there, not fully there, right? He's not the best version of himself, because they need Brandon Ingram to be the best version of himself. You know, and some might look at it and go, he will be because he needs a contract. Yeah, but he's not going to get the contract he wants regardless. Brandon Ingram could play all 82 games and average 30, and he probably still wouldn't get the contract that, he's, that he wants, right? Because teams know and have looked at his history and know he's not the number one guy, right? He's probably not even a number two guy. You know, Brandon Ingram's probably, most likely, going to be like a 25, maybe 30 million guy because the salary cap is going up next season, not this season coming up, but next season, and it's supposed to continue, go up going forward. So there is there is this thought that, like, you know, the new the 25 million contract might be the $30 million contract now type thing. But, you know, it's just, it's hard to gauge BI because he's unreliable. So he has a lot he needs to prove, but not every player is that way. You know, Brandon Ingram, he has all the tools and all the skill sets. And I mean, the dude's a legit three level scorer, can do pretty much everything on the basketball court, and is not even in the conversation for, you know, one of the top guys in the NBA. I mean, it's just, again, he's a great player, but not a, where, where does he rate? Top 25, top 30 player, maybe? Right? Like, I, I mean, if I really listed it out, I could probably name at least probably 25 to 30 players that are, I'd take over Brandon Ingram. You know, so like, where does where does he rank? I mean, he has, you know, one in Zion that on is on his team that you'd take over him. No, if Zion's healthy. And if DeJounte Murray could get back to Spurs, DeJounte Murray, all defense, top point guard, give you, you know, 22, 8, and 8, I'm, I'd probably take him over Brandon Ingram. Right, if he again, if he can get back to that, if he's like the Atlanta Hawks version, then may, probably not. But again, like, also, what do you get in return for Brandon Ingram? If you're just swapping Brandon Ingram for 
DeJounte Murray, essentially, right? And you're just kind of getting, you know, whatever picks or whatever. I don't think the Pelicans are that much better. I think that they are slightly better just because I I think that, you know, DeJounte Murray and his playmaking ability, as well as being able to give you the same offensive production that I think Brandon Ingram can give you and might be a better fit. I think that they would be slightly better, but I don't think that they're, they would be significantly better. And again, now if you could turn Brandon Ingram into like a legit center and then, you know, another like rotation piece or something, then yeah, sure. But I mean, if you're just basically giving Brandon Ingram away or you just lose him for nothing or you're keeping him on the roster all year and he's just not bought in, then I do have my questions about the Pelicans. I do have my questions about them. They are, they're a real mystery to me, in my opinion. Right, this is a team that, if you had a time machine and jumped in that time machine and you came back and you said, "Hey, um, the Pelicans just won the championship," I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't. I'd be like, "Wow, well, hey, man, Dejounte Murray, you know, Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram, Dre Murphy, and Zion sounds pretty good to me." Right? Like, yeah, they lack a little size stuff like that, but you know, they, they got a squad. Right. And then this like if you did the same thing when jumped in your time machine came back and you were like, Yeah, Pelicans didn't even make the playoff. Like they didn't even make the play in. I wouldn't be shocked. Be like, yeah, it makes sense. You know, Brandon Ingram basically checked out, got hurt, Zion got hurt. It was like DeJounte and a bunch of role guys. Makes sense. Like, I could see either way, which is crazy to think about, but no, it, w- it would be cool to see them because I do think they're a, a fun team. And when they're on and they're cooking and they're clicking, they're a joy to watch. And I, I'm I'm hopeful that, you know, because, look, the more competition, the better it is, the better basketball we get. So if we get, you know, that that high-end Pelicans team that, we, that you look at and go, oh, man, this team might be something, then let's go. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you think the Pelicans are a team that uh, can win the championship? Do you think, yeah, they have no shot? Do you think this would be a better Zion? What are your thoughts on the Pelicans? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. We enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.